So this question essentially is asking about a pendulum, except we don't have to use any of the usual mathematics of a pendulum. Uh, we can just use conservation of energy. But we have a situation like this. We have a, a string, and there is a small sphere in the end of this string. And we know that this sphere is going to be raised to some angle, and it's going to let go. And the sphere is going to end up uh, when it's straight vertical again. When this angle in here, this angle that we've been given, this is called angle um, theta. When an angle is zero, that means the the pendulum is going to be all the way down, so it's going horizontally right there. Um, so what we're essentially doing is we're taking, when we lift this pendulum up to this angle theta, we're essentially lifting the pendulum bob up a distance h, where h is this distance here. It's a distance from being at this level uh, to being at this level. Well, let's see if we can figure out what h would be in terms of the given quantities. We're given that the length of our pendulum string is, they called it lambda. And so this whole distance over here would also be, be lambda. This is supposed to be like a circular path there. Um, well, h appears to be the entire length lambda minus this length right here. And that length right there um, would be lambda times the cosine of the angle. Now, the initial angle that it makes, they call it theta naught in the problem. So that's what we can call it here. So lambda minus lambda cosine theta naught is going to be equal to the height h. And so, therefore, the potential energy that the system will possess uh, above the uh, initial level of, or the, the what would be in this case, the final level of the pendulum bob, when it's all the way down as far as it can go in the downward direction, um, the potential energy that it would have, the gravitational potential energy, would be equal to mgh. H is the distance above which you know we have lifted our pendulum bob. And M is its mass, and G is the gravitational field strength. Um, so therefore, we can calculate what that what that energy is. Let's calculate H first, so we can we can use that if we need to. Um, lambda is one, and so um, H in this case is just going to be one. And I leave off all the units here, so we don't need them right now. 1 minus 1 times the cosine of theta naught, which we were given as 40 degrees. Um, if you calculate that out, what you get for H is 0 0.23395. Uh, that would be in, in meters. Uh, so given that, if we take that H multiplied times M times G, what you end up getting is M is 1.1 kilograms. G will use uh, a worldwide average of 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then H is going to be, as we just figured out, 0 0.23395. And you multiply that out, and what you end up with is a value of 2.52 joules, and that is going to be um, UG. But now, by conservation of energy, uh, since gravity is part of our system, gravity is internal force, and we're going to ignore any, any other forces that are doing work on our system, uh, the force causing the pendulum bob to move in a circle does not do work on it because it is perpendicular to the motion. So therefore, the mechanical energy of our system should remain constant, uh, which means that the kinetic energy at the bottom should equal the potential energy at the top. So therefore, this is also the kinetic energy that we're trying to find. That's actually the second answer they asked us for. We found that one first. So how 
do we get the speed then? Part A says, what is the speed of the sphere when theta is equal to zero? Well, uh, to do that, uh, we can just use the fact that the kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. So two times the kinetic energy divided by m is going to equal v squared. So the square root of two times k over m is going to equal v. And if you plug that number in, those numbers into our um, equation here, so we get 4v. Let me go ahead and just do that right now. Um, we have the square root of, open parentheses, 2 times 2.52 divided by 1.1, close parentheses, equals, and we get V is equal to 2.14 meters per second. So rounding it off to, uh, I believe we have two significant digits in our numbers here. Uh, we should say that um, V is equal to 2.1 meters per second and that the energy is equal to 2.5 joules. And that is the answer to the question.